Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone's having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we're in the book of James chapter 3 verse 13 which says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. In verses 11 and 12, there are three illustrations from nature that demonstrate the sinfulness of cursing. The genuine believer will not contradict his profession of faith by the regular use of unwholesome words. And in verses 13 through 18, James makes a transition from discussing teaching, dealing with wisdom's impact on everyone's life. He supports the truth of the Old Testament wisdom literature, which is Job through Song of Solomon. And James shows that wisdom is divided into two realms, man's wisdom and God's wisdom. Wise means skillfully applying knowledge to the matter of practical living. The word for understanding means a specialist or professional who could skillfully apply and expertly to practical situations. James is asking who is truly skilled in the art of living. Meekness is opposite to arrogance and self promotion. The Greeks described it as power under control. Wisdom, the kind that comes only from God, is a gift from God. Those who have wisdom and the Holy Spirit has given them the knowledge of God's word to show the world by their actions and by their speech. This is saying your life and your speech will reveal to those around you who you truly are in Jesus Christ. Bragging of your position in Jesus has no place. Those who truly have a wonderful relationship with Jesus do not need to brag. They are generally humble people who just love God. So what is wisdom? In this new section, beginning in this verse, James will show how each person answers that question for themselves. And that answer depends on whether their focus is limited to this life or it includes eternity in heaven. He starts out with a provocational question. This test immediately challenges our personal pride. Who is wise and understanding among you? James uses two different Greek words with two different meanings. Understanding, which focuses on intellect and factual knowledge. Wisdom, which James will center on more heavily in this passage, is more related to practical real-life use of moral reasoning. This is not to say intellect is unimportant, but James' primary point in the letter is about what to do. Those with some scriptural training and higher st status in the faith community will be tempted to count on themselves to be qualified as wise. Those who feel inadequate in spiritual things might hope that they won't be noticed. James' answer to his own question may seem as a surprise because as humans, we tend to measure wisdom as having all the right answers to all the hard questions. Instead, James goes back to what he wrote about faith and good works in chapter 2. I will show you my faith by my good works. A truly wise person will demonstrate the humility of wisdom by his good works. The true test of God's wisdom is a life well lived. A life spent doing good works for others. As the book of Proverbs repeatedly makes clear, humility is an essential component of living wisely without setting ourselves aside. We cannot hope to become wise servants of God and call us to be. James asks the readers who are among him, who has wisdom and understanding. Those who know more may think that they are better than other people, but knowledge and wisdom are not the same. A person can know a lot, of, but have little wisdom. They need to have both. They do not show wisdom so much in what they say and think. They show it more in what they do. It is what they say and how they live. True wisdom does good works. Just as we can see real life faith in what it does, so we know this wisdom by its actions. We will know a wise person by his good life. A wise person will be meek. The meek person will be strong, yet humble and gentle. The wise person does not desire honor or fame. When other people do him wrong, he doesn't seek revenge. The Spirit of God gives us the strength to be gentle and humble. The life that is wise and meek is one that is under con the control of God. And the Lord Jesus is our perfect example of this. He was meek and humble in heart because he had a real 
strong character. You see, this continues kind of what we talked about yesterday when we were in James 3.17. And this is showing that we need to apply what God gives us. The wisdom and the knowledge that God gives us. And the meekness that he will put in our heart. And all this comes from God. Because like I said, you won't find what God gives you. This knowledge, this wisdom. These are not worldly wisdom. It's not intellect. You know, you can be wise in the world, but true wisdom comes from knowing the Word of God. But you have to be doers of the Word, not just hearers only, not just readers only. To gain the true knowledge of God, you've got to get into His Word. But you also have to apply that wisdom in how you live your life. This is what James is telling us here. So as we grow in our personal relationship with Jesus, through prayer, reading the Bible, sharing our testimony, getting in God's presence, worshiping Him, Fellowship with other believers, encouraging one another. We need to put our faith in action. When we read our Bible to know God more and gain more knowledge of God. When we pray to Him and we talk to Him like an old friend, tell Him everything that's in our heart. When we allow God to speak to us. When we get to a place where we're not distracted by the stuff of the world, where we put God at the center. When our focus is entirely on Him. We're putting Him first before our family, before our job, whatever it may be. And we're focused on entirely on him wanting to grow in our relationship. Another important part of growing is to walk our walk. Do good works. This comes from God. Like I said, it's not something that you can intellectually think of. It's not something you can find in this world. It's something that only comes from God. Because as I've said, everything that God gives, the knowledge, the wisdom, the meekness, the peace, the joy, this all comes from God. This is not found on this earth. It's supernatural, Holy Spirit and power. You cannot find it on this earth. It is only given by God the Father. And when you grow in your relationship and God gives you these gifts that you cannot find here, and you walk in these gifts, you're going to be a wise and understanding person. And he's asking who's wise and understanding here. So I pray you take this to heart. Gain the knowledge by reading the Word of God. But more than that, walk it out. But before we go, I want to give you an opportunity to get to know Jesus if you don't know him right now. I want to share the gospel. So if you got to this point of the video and you don't know Jesus today and maybe you don't want to know him, maybe you're just playing games with God today. Maybe you intellectually know who Jesus is and you know what he did on the cross. But when hard times come, you're not running to Jesus because you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to get to know him. You don't talk to him. You don't pray. You don't read the Bible. Well, I believe that you're here for a reason. You're not here by accident. I believe God's given you one more opportunity to get to know him today. And it may be your last opportunity. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. That's why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you on the cross and what it means for you. So listen to the words. Don't turn off the video. Just keep listening. And accept these words of the gospel for what, of what Jesus did for you. Apply the words to your life. Allow the words to change you. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin creates a wall. That separates each and every one of us from God. And this is because all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of our sin is death, which means because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There is a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve to be punished. We all de deserve to be destroyed. We all deserve to be eternally separated from God forever, which that means a life in hell. But here's the mercy of God. God loves you so much. That God sent his son Jesus, who left his throne in heaven and became a flesh and blood human. But he was still 100% fully God and fully man. And he lived on this earth a perfect, sinless life. And on the cross, he became sin for us to pay for our sins. Which means when he was on that cross, he put our sins on himself like a garment. Jesus took our punishment in our place for our sins. Because as I've said, there is a punishment, but we are the ones who sin. We are the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus, who was innocent of death because he never sinned, he took our punishment in our place. The punishment that we rightly deserve, Jesus took that in our place. You see, we're all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you accept the words of the gospel, when you apply the words to your life, and when you allow the words to change you, then it's like you're putting a washing machine. You're washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. You're washed white as snow. And when you believe the gospel message and are saved, when you apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you, then you put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. 
Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. Jesus is the door to enter heaven. There are not multiple ways to get into heaven and no one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad can't confess you're a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn it. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' blood on the cross is our ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took our punishment. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from an eternity in hell. And if you sincerely believe in Jesus and surrender your life to him, which means you're not just saying words, not trying to please someone, not looking for a get out of hell free card, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live from now, because you've accepted the words of the gospel, and you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you apply the words to your life, and you allow the words to change you, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift of grace that he's extended to you right now. All you have to do is accept it. Just reach out and grab it, because you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. You can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it's not going to matter how much you've given a charity or that you think I've been a good person. I never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest they mention boast. You see, grace is an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it, which means we can't earn our way to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. We're not worthy. We don't even deserve Jesus. But God loves us so very much that by his grace, he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him forever, spend an eternity with him in heaven. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, that free ticket into heaven today. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept the words of the gospel you just heard. Apply the words to your life. Allow the words to change you. And we always follow the gospel with a warning of Jesus' imminent return. It's a dire warning because right now you can personally know who Jesus is. But one thing is for sure, and the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. You need to turn to Jesus today. You don't have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still the time. Tomorrow may be too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now while you haven't came to Jesus, maybe you don't think that you're good enough to say, you don't know what I've done. Maybe you're waiting until your children grow up and move out. Maybe you're waiting until your are is secure in your life. Whatever excuse it may be that you're telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer. Because there is no guarantee that you'll live to see tomorrow. And if you die before you come to Jesus, and when you're standing before God face to face, it's going to be too late to make excuses why you didn't come to Jesus before. So turn to Jesus today while you still the time. Today is the day of salvation. So if you would like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation. And a sample prayer, but these are just templates. An outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. And there are no magic words to be saved. In fact, the words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart. A sincere cry out. That you cannot do this on your own. That you need a Savior. And what you're doing is admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior. In need of Jesus. You believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. You confess Jesus is Lord. You repent of your sins. Which means you're turning away from your sins. You're having a change of heart. A change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept the words of the gospel, apply the words to your life, allow these words to change you, allow him to change you, then the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and change you if you let him. The Holy Spirit can take away whatever you're struggling with if you let him. Well, I pray you got something out of this, but never take my word for it. Don't seek what anyone else has to say. Go to the source for yourself. Because no one on this earth has the answers. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world, they do not have the answers. Only God has the answers for you. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone 
where you're preached for a few minutes during a Google search, you're not going to get the full picture. They won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. You see, the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle, hard time, you, whatever you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible. You see, the Bible is our roadmap. The Bible is our GPS. The Bible is our lantern. The Bible is our flashlight. Whatever analogy you want to use, but you see, the Bible will help you to navigate through this crazy, ever-darkening world that we're living in right now. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. See you tomorrow if the Lord tarries or we'll see you in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption is drawing now, Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, let's go!